Welcome to this tutorial of personal cash flow. My name is Manus Neuer. I would like to present to you a simple method of managing personal cash flow that will help you take control of your everyday finances. First, a disclosure. This presentation does not contain investment advisory content and no such services are offered within. Let's start with a discussion of budgeting. Its central goal is to limit spending to plan within each category, like rent, food, entertainment, and so forth, over a given period of time. This helps you achieve personal financial goals like increasing savings and investments. Online programs help with personal budgeting by linking to your bank accounts, credit cards, and billing institutions, and giving you a view of your spending versus budget. However, budgeting does not answer the question, will there be enough money in your account at every point in the new future to address both planned and unplanned expenses? This is important for both peace of mind and avoiding those annoying overdraft fees which can also hurt your credit rating. Cash flow planning will deliver a full picture of our bank account balances both in the past and in the near future. In this tutorial I will be presenting a method of effective cash flow using Microsoft Excel. Let's start with a case study and then look at how cash flow is managed for our subject. Her name is Jane. She graduated college in 2010, is employed and pays rent, has a couple of student loans and two credit cards, manages her everyday expenses in a credit union or bank checking account, and has a savings account at the same institution, is fairly computer savvy and knows how to use Microsoft Excel. Her goals are to make sure that there is always enough cash in her checking account, to pay bills on time, and to grow savings. So let's have a look at how Jane manages her finances um, in Excel. She has a tab called Cash Flow where she has all of the transactions going through her bank account. And these are tied to other sources of information. So in the first column she has type um, and transaction dates, expenses, incomes, the ongoing balance uh, which we'll discuss in a moment, and the status of every transaction whether past or future. Starting at the period she uh, started to manage her cash flow with, at the beginning of August she had a balance of $1,000 in her bank account. And then as she moved through, she actually has uh, different uh, income and expense types coming through her account. And she'll be able to just uh, key this in by accessing um, a list that we've already she's already prepared in advance for it. And um, when you take this template, you can download it and use the same list or add to it if you wish. Uh, she has a paycheck coming in in this uh, instance on the 1st of August and that goes in and updates her bank balance. Uh, we see that the Excel has a formula that automatically calculates that. And so as she moves through the month she has her various transactions coming through, interest income for example, rent going out, and so forth. And what she's really looking at is the column E balance in her bank account wanting to make sure that at the lowest point in the month um, the amount in her bank account does not go below a certain threshold. For some people it might be a thousand dollars, others might be comfortable with five hundred or even a hundred dollars, but what you want to make sure of is that your balance does not go towards zero where you're in risk of paying uh, overdraft fees. So she's um, transcribed her transactions in for August. These are all past transactions. Uh, say we're now towards the end of August and to be able to plan for September, she's copied in her expected transactions for September. And so we have the expected paycheck coming in and all the rest of the anticipated expenses. Uh, a few noteworthy items here are how do we connect with other sources of data that are coming through? Because we know that um, a checking account is not the only place that uh, Jane is managing her finances. She has a couple of credit cards and student loans also in flight. So um, for each of these credit cards, there are transactions. Um, she obtains these by either downloading them from her credit card website or just transcribing them as they occur. Uh, this one has fairly fixed transactions with uh, web subscriptions, gym, and, and things like that. Uh, we have one here for household items that seems a bit out of the ordinary, but that's fine. And then uh, we have another credit card with uh, additional transactions, and that's the one she uses for more of her everyday uh, expenses like grocery and so forth. And these two she can, you know, transcribe, she can pull down a list of different types, 
Uh, notice that there's the concept of transaction date and payment date. So the transaction date is the date that the expense was occurred, incurred, and the payment date calculates as a date that is a function of what day is it that we spent the money. Uh, the credit card company typically um, has a due date of the next month minus a certain number of days from the end of the month, whether it's 10 days or, and so forth. So Excel knows how to calculate that automatically. If a transaction occurred in July, it'll be due in August, and if it occurred in August, it'll be due in September at some point. We can actually use these payment dates to pull them into the main cash flow Excel. Okay. She also has a couple of student loans. Uh, these are long running loans. They have a fixed amount every month. So a hundred dollars and fifty dollars monthly. And these are, um, calculated in just one entry for the student loans. So there could be theoretically a couple of them, but they come in on the same day. So she just adds them together and they go out of her banking account. As for the credit card payments, um, I'm using a, uh, what's called a name of a range here to be able to uh, determine what or which transactions for each credit card are going to come in at every point in time. Uh, it's a little bit more advanced use of Excel. Um, if you do pick up the template, um, be in touch with me and I'll, um, I'll go into it further. Uh, but basically for the credit card number one, we have $200 coming in. <clears throat> and for the second one, we have $1,000 coming in in, um, in August. Now, as we look at um, both months, uh, we have what's happened in August and then what's going to happen in September, and we can then continue to project uh, to the future. Now, suppose Jane is, uh, today's August 30th, and she's uh, got a bill from a, a visit to the doctor's office, and she'll want to add it to her cash flow. So uh, she'll just go into a new line here and then look at the types. Uh, there's a medical bill. The date is 830, the amount $150. And to get the balance, uh, we can just copy paste it from the previous line and this is a past transaction. But we want to place this properly in the list so that we get the true balance. And so what you'll do is just grab all the data up to the beginning except for the opening balance. We don't want that in the uh, sort order. We want that opening balance always to be on the top and then just sort the data so that we get the dates correct and that falls into its proper place so that we have the medical and that will uh, reduce our balance at the end of the month to 968, still the comfortable threshold. She'll have her paycheck coming in and she can see that in September her uh, cash flow will be at a positive 800 uh, plus a little bit more, which is um, fine. Uh, Jane is also responsible um, in terms of her savings. She's uh, setting aside $500 a month into a savings account and she can tweak that based on if she sees her cash flow is declining, um, she can deposit less or if it's increasing, she can maybe deposit a little bit more. Um, and this is a good way to sort of be able to visualize how much money is available for savings. Thanks for watching this presentation. If you need any help with your personal cash flow needs, please do not hesitate to contact me at mnewer at gmail.com. Also, don't forget to download the Excel template that I will be attaching to the YouTube video of this session. Thanks again and have yourself a great day.